Let's see what the, the folks have to ask you. Loretta Copeland on the Larry King Now blog asks, what's the thing that you love most about being an astrophysicist? I like waking up in the morning completely ignorant of an entire frontier of research that I want to contribute to expand. We don't know what dark matter is. We don't know what dark energy is. We don't know what was around before the beginning of the universe. We don't know how organic molecules coalesced to become self-replicating life. These are profound areas of ignorance, and that excites me. Where do you look for that, though? I don't. <laughs> What, I mean, you, you've got to do research for the rest of your life to find out the first step you have to take to look at that. It is. It, so, as a scientist, you learn to love the questions themselves. And, in fact, I've taken that to a next limit. It's, these are the questions we even know to ask. Yes. The question that I want to know is the one that will arise only after we have answered these. Yes. Putting us, in a, putting us on, a, on a new vista allowing parts of the universe to be pondered that we don't even know is there to ponder You're yet. moving on, on down the road. You're moving you're, on you, down the road. You've gotten into the antechamber where you know what question to ask, but you're not even into the main salon yet. There's an, old, there's an old saying, as the area of your knowledge grows, so too does the perimeter of your ignorance. Cortland Beale on Facebook. Mm -hmm. How does the moon affect climate change? Hardly. Uh, yeah. The moon has tides. Yes. So here, here's the biggest effect. Um, full moon has bigger tides than other phases of the moon. If you have a hurricane going up the coast, they don't move very fast, 20 miles an hour or so. It takes more than a week, 10 days, two weeks, to go up the coast. Somebody's going to get hit with that hurricane during full moon or new moon high tide. Mm -hmm. And hurricanes have tide surges. So as glaciers melt, tide, um, ocean levels rise. It can rise just an inch. You don't even notice an inch, except in the tide surge. And that, that wall you built to keep your city dry on, high, on, high, on bad weather gets breached by that one inch. And that's all it takes. The middle of your city is now connected to a semi-infinite quantity of ocean. And you flood the city. That's what happened here for Hurricane Sandy. Do you think New Orleans has a responsibility to rebuild parts of that city in a place that it's, it's just predictive? No. They, they will flood again. No. So the problem there is we all blame in Katrina Katrina was a Category 3 when it crossed New Orleans. It was People, the levee wall. Right? The levee! It was an engineering problem. we got to admit that, look in a mirror, yes. and say, we messed up. To conflate it with that storm, which was not... Correct. Uh, it, that storm should have just been a, just, a, just another Category 3. Ryan Clark on Facebook asks, are you personally af what are you personally afraid of, and what about it makes it so scary to you? I'm going to take the really high road here. Yeah. I'm afraid of the resistance that I see in the world, in the United States especially, from informed advice given by scientists that will impact how we manage our own civilization. That scares me. What, what is science? Science is a way of learning what is objectively true. Abraham Lincoln, in 1863, when he had other things on his plate at the time, signed into law the National Academy of Sciences, whose job it is to advise the president and Congress, the legislative branch, on laws and issues that relate to our health, well-being, and security. Every time I see movements in rejection of scientific consensus, I weep for the future of civilization. Never miss a beat. Subscribe to Larry King now and watch new episodes every day.